Um, I want to first of all thank um, several uh, of my uh, colleagues and, and members of other parishes in the diocese who are here. I can't tell you uh, how much that means to me and uh, to all of us at uh, Two Saints. Um, folks are here from St. Paul's, which has been enormously helpful in the last year and, and beyond uh, with, with uh, helping to fund right on school. And the rector, Fred Reynolds, is here, and their assistant, Jennifer Zog, is here. Um, folks are here from St. Mark's and St. John's over on Culver Road, and their rector, Cindy Rasmussen, um, and from Good Shepherd out in Webster, with their rector, Lance Robbins, who's uh, also the dean of the Monroe District. And then there are a bunch of clergy here from what I've come to call the Two Saints Stable. <laughs> we are blessed with clergy, at least I think clergy are a blessing. So we are blessed with clergy. Um, Phil Schaefer is here, and John Burr, who was up here before, and Sandra Accordingly um, over there, and Peter Peters, who also works for the diocese, but it's more important than you know, two saints. <laughs> and uh, I guess that's it. Mary Ann Brody is at St. Stephen's and Virtuous. <laughs> oh. Uh, and uh, of course, the bishop is here and, and, and Canon Sakura as well. So and thank all of you for being here. Um, it means a lot to us. Um, I want to uh, be begin by doing what Mr. Waller did and, and acknowledge my uh, predecessor. One of my predecessors, uh, Reverend Canon St. Julian Simpkins, whose uh, wife and daughter are present with us. Um, Canon Simpkins came to Rochester from Cincinnati in 1964. Uh, he was just in time for the riots. <laughs> that occurred that year, and he immediately showed what kind of priest he was. He was in the thick of them, pastorally and prophetically. And he and several other clergymen in the city were almost immediately responsible for the foundation of fight, which did some incredible work in healing the city and moving it on and doing some justice. But another response of Canon Simpkins and people of St. Simons was the gradual development through the late 60s of several community ministries. Uh, one of those was, became eventually the Wright Arms School. Another now exists as the Oregon Leopold Daycare Center. Um, another one exists as St. Simons Terrace. It's not a coincidence that St. Simon's Terrace is named St. Simon's. It was originally a ministry of St. Simon's Church. I, I want to acknowledge as well our, the, our diocese and its leadership from the very beginning. Looking back through some vestry minutes, I found uh, that the first diocesan grant to assist with those community programs was in 1968. Um, it was $9,500 which in 1968 was actually a great deal of money. Since the rector was only making $6,000 a year, <laughs> 1968 was a great deal of money. <coughs> and the support has been uh, steady ever since. Uh, when I came to that, the, we continue, however, to live on, a, on that shoestring. Uh, all of us, uh, Madeline and Karen and Sharon and I, all looked at each other when uh, Nate said something about operating on a shoestring. I, we, we laughed at each other and I said, we still got that shoestring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when, I, when I came here uh, six and a half years ago, uh, but who's counting? Um, I, only, I only insisted on one thing from the leadership of the writing school. And that was that they changed their slogan. Their slogan at the time was, quote, quietly 
making a difference. And I had been in Rochester long before it became clear to me that anybody making a difference in the lives of so many children should do it loudly, not quietly. And that's sort of what I've tried to do ever since. Um, the last thing I want to say, uh, money isn't everything, but it is important, as we all know, when it makes ministry happen. Uh, since the merger of St. Luke's and St. Simon's in 1988, the parish has supported the school to the tune of just over $500,000. That's money that is given between 100 and 300, depending on the year, kids, a safe and supportive environment for six weeks. It is also provided 15 to 25 jobs each summer. We've been doing that, and we will continue. <laughs> but to do it, we need lots of help from lots of people, because the well at Two Saints ain't quite so deep as it used to be. We used to depend on a very large endowment, and we used it quite liberally, far more liberally than we probably should have. But we used it nevertheless, and uh, it's not there anymore. So, hence, uh, we're out there pounding the streets, looking for help from people like you to keep this ministry going. So, uh, I say loudly that St. Simon's and then St. Luke and St. Simon's has, at least from the days of Ken and Simpkins, and actually from the days of Father Primo before him, cared deeply about the city, and especially about the city's children. The need to do so, every single one of us in this room knows, the need to continue to do so is greater <coughs> than ever. And I hope, if nothing else, that this event galvanizes our commitment to continue to serve the children of the city.